Good evening, everyone. Um, one of the things that Resorts World has said is that it would be gravely irresponsible to release these captive dolphins back into the wild simply because there's not enough evidence to show that um, their survival after they've been released is um, promising. So my question is, what does the process of rehabilitating these captive dolphins actually involve? And also, what has been the success rate? Well, I don't have that data. Uh, I have released dolphins that have been long-term captive dolphins from Guatemala, Nicaragua, Colombia, Brazil, Haiti, uh, in the coast of Georgia in the United States. The only one that was a failure were two U.S. Navy dolphins that we released off of Key West. Well, the Navy doesn't call them dolphins. They call them Mark V weapon systems. <laughs> and I released two Mark V weapon systems. <laughs> after a year of uh, rehabilitation and it's really the wrong place to do it because this is where all the captive you know facilities are in the in florida along the roads and sea world and all these places and they're all connected to the navy which are civilian contractors they're all part of the same club and they did not want us to release these dolphins and when we released them they were there waiting for them to rescue them so that's what happened and uh, there's a book out there, you can find it on Amazon, called To Free a Dolphin. Hey, there it is. I'll sign that for you. <laughs> I love that book. Yeah, okay. That could answer some of your questions. Yeah, and so they always bring that up. You know, well, you can't release dolphins because uh, they, they just can't make it. Well, there, there is a, um, actually, I have a protocol. Let me see now. What I will do is send that. To Lewis and he'll put it on his website and you'll be able to read and it's taken me about 40 years to write that by trial and failure there is protocol and there's a way to do it uh, dolphins are smart they're not stupid you know they say that we can't release dolphins into the wild once they've been in captivity because they can't remember how to catch a fish again they can teach the same dolphin to catch a ball but I can't teach it to catch a fish <laughs> So I'm not buying it. They, they actually can be rehabilitated, most of them, not all of them, because of what we have done to them. But many can, and, and so that protocol is uh, pretty good reading. Uh, you can go to, which website you put it on? Setusdolphins.com, once it's up. I think it's on my website. It's on Dolphin Project, dolphinproject.org. You'll find it there. But dolphins can be, certainly these 25 who have, only been in captivity a short period of time. Yeah, no problem with them. Thank you. But I don't have the data, the numbers. I don't, I don't have that with me. I think just to add very quickly as well, that the resort store has said um, that they, they did catch the whole family, minus the babies and the lactating mothers. So these are a, a group, a pot. So they can be released together as well to help each other back in the wild. Um, it struck me that um, I think the argument against the capture of dolphins is really strong, but it struck me that the alternative, which will be you know, swimming with dolphins and whale watching, is probably more expensive for the ordinary you know, person. So I'm just wondering if you were to try and get the ordinary family or people to try and support your cause, they probably would say, yeah, yeah, I support your cause, but they would think to themselves, yeah, but I'll still pay to go watch the dog. Hello, at Resorts World Sentosa. So what would you say to convince them otherwise? It's all yours today, Rick. I'm not sure I understand the question. Are you saying that people go whale watching and also want to see a dolphin show? Well, they would think it, it would be too expensive. They wouldn't, you know, because it would, it would mean going abroad, getting on a cruise, yeah. and it's, it's infinitely, well, definitely well, more expensive. I, I think I understand your question. Yeah. And, uh, I heard that today from a journalist. Uh, I was in New York not too very long ago, and the New York Aquarium is there, which is a very rundown aquarium at Coney Island. And she was saying, well, if the dolphins weren't here, all of these kids from the inner city would never get to see a dolphin. They can't afford to go whale watching and dolphin watching. And, and that's true. And the reality is you can't always get what you want. And I think, well, you know, 
These very same children are never going to see a snow leopard. <laughs> Does this mean we have to go to the Himalayas and drag a snow leopard into the room for them? <laughs> or, or do we teach our children to control their desires? I think that's the most important thing in, teach, in saving this planet, controlling our desires. That's the key to it. My six-year-old has no need, does not want to go see a dolphin jump through a hoop. She doesn't need to see a dinosaur. She loves dinosaurs. No. <laughs> you don't have to have a dinosaur in captivity. Look, we have blue whales protected. They're not in captivity. So you don't have to have animals in captivity uh, in order to appreciate them. You only have to look at Japan. Japan has 50 dolphinariums. 50 more than all of Europe, in a country the size of California. One of the reasons is cute is big in Japan. And they'll tell you that we, uh, we're displaying these dolphins. They'll tell you the same thing the resorts world is saying. We, we have to display them so we can sensitize people. People will see dolphins. You only appreciate what you know. And uh, if we do these dolphin shows, People will protect them. Well, 50 dolphinariums translates into more than 100 million people who have been through those dolphinariums in Japan. They're now sensitized, they're educated, and they're going to protect the dolphins. Well, I was at the Cove two weeks ago, and I couldn't find one out of 100 million people. So there is no connection between a dolphin show and conservation. It simply it doesn't exist. Yeah. It's about uh, winter, a dolphin with a prosthetic limb. I'd like to hear your thoughts on the film and also on uh, the conservation aquarium that he's being held at, which is, uh, I believe, Clearwater Marine Aquarium, which is right down your alley yeah. uh, near Tampa in Florida. So uh, basically, I'd like to hear your thoughts on uh, those two things, the film and the project itself. Well, and, uh, should... Whether we should feel guilty watching the film, I guess. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to see it. Um... It promotes captivity. I know, the, I know the people involved. In fact, they asked me to help them promote it. And I said, thanks, but no tanks. Uh, it's definitely going to promote captivity. Yes, there is a, a, a rescue that took place there. It's a very moving story. And that dolphin can't be released into the wild. But that dolphin, Winter is his name, can be taken to a sanctuary where there's natural seawater and live out his life with quality and dignity, but instead they built a bigger and better tank because they're expecting thousands of people to come to the dolphinarium. And uh, I just would like to see these dolphinariums phased out, not expanded. So, but I haven't seen the movie, as they say. Thank you. I think just to add as well that the resorts world is using dolphin tail a bit now, but we've it is a complete different story of what's happening at Resorts World. The 27 dolphins that were caught from the wall weren't injured. They weren't caught in, in a crap trap. They were intentionally caught. And that's a whole different story now of rescuing or intentionally trapping the dolphins and Resorts World. I don't know why, but they're using yeah. this to strengthen their position. My, my uh, relationship with the Clearwater... It used to be called Clearwater Marine Science Center, and I had a call from somebody... I get these calls, you know, if there's a dolphin in trouble, anywhere in the world, my phone will ring. And then it became a fax machine. Now we get a fax. Now, now I get emails. But it was a phone call from Mary Mosley saying, there's a dolphin here uh, in the flats. It wasn't really in trouble. You know, someone needs to go out there and just sort of guide it out of the flats. And I didn't get there in time. The Clearwater Marine Science Center captured the dolphin and put it into what was then a sewage treatment plant. And they were going to keep it because people will pay to see. Sunset Sam was the dolphin's name. And we campaigned over there for months and months and months. And finally, they built a bigger tank. They didn't let Sunset Sam go. Uh, that became the Clearwater Aquarium that is now featured in the movie. And they're expecting, as I say, millions of people to show up to see this celebrity dolphin winter with the artificial tail. And it's the same old dog and pony show. Okay, Your final this, thoughts, mean, this must mean we're 
concluding because I, 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 uh, I like to read this last paragraph in this book. You look like a professor, don't actually? Yeah, I realized after I wrote this book, I only had to write this last paragraph, <laughs> not the whole damn book. <laughs> In a world where so much that is wild and free has already been lost to us, we must leave these beautiful mammals free to swim as they will and must. They do us no harm and wish us none, and we should let them alone. 